This is Lexi Newman, and I would like to introduce you to a brief history of Coldwell Banker Newman Real Estate, from our early beginnings to our current position as a local market leader. The episodes will be brief and intended to give you a general but accurate overview of who we are and how we came to be. Episode 1, In the Beginning, features a conversation with my dad Jeff Newman recounting the early years of our office, back when we were known as Herb Newman Real Estate. Hi, it's Jeff Newman here. Welcome to our introductory podcast about Coldwell Banker Newman Real Estate. With me is my interviewer slash co-host slash daughter Lexi Newman, who also happens to be with us here in the marketing department. Lexi here. I've been working at Coldwell Banker Newman Real Estate since graduating university in August, but I've actually been in and out of the office all my life, and it was actually my first job when I was in high school. So... We've been in business in some iteration since 1971, and we're here today to recount a very small bit of that history. So yeah, let's get started by talking about my opa, or Herb Newman. So he's the one that founded the office, right, back in uh, 1971? 1971, that's right, he is. Um, Herb Newman Real Estate was the name of the company at that time. And what made him get into the real estate business? Well, that's a good question. My dad worked at Olmark, which which is now called uh, Blount on Edinburgh Road, still exists. Uh, some of his co-workers got him into investing in real estate, and as he was going through the process of buying and selling and dealing with an agent, I think eventually thought to himself, you know, this is something that I could probably do. Uh, and so he did. He got licensed in 1969 when I was two years old, and he started his own brokerage two years later. So Opa was doing real estate pretty much your whole life then? Yes, he was. Real estate is, is the only career that I've really been exposed to from a very early early time. Uh, my mom followed him into real estate first, joining the company as uh, as a secretary, uh, eventually the secretary bookkeeper, and eventually after that a salesperson herself. My mom and dad are, are just a really typical Canadian immigrant story, not exceptional uh, from a lot of folks who have experienced the same thing in their lives. They came to this country with nothing. They worked hard, long hours to make a better life for themselves and for their family. And and, uh, I think they genuinely appreciated just the opportunity to make something for themselves here that they didn't have in Europe. Um, So when did you get involved in the family business? Well, you know how some people know from a very young age exactly what they want to be? Yep. That wasn't me. I didn't know. In fact, I spent most of my childhood certain of one thing, that I did not want to follow my father's footsteps. But things have a way of changing, and when I was 20 and taking a year off my post-secondary education, I took the time to get my real estate license and kind of jumped in from that point and worked with my dad. Only a year? <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm looking to return shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and what did uh, working with your dad teach you about real estate? Really, I, I attribute any success that I, I may have had in real estate to having had the opportunity to observe my dad and, and learn from him. But he wasn't and isn't the type to give specific instructions or tell me specifically what to do. In fact, I, I don't really ever recall my dad telling me what to do. Rather, my dad was an observer and he would make an occasional observation known that would resonate with me for weeks or in some cases years. If I had to give you one example of of one thing my dad instilled in me is is that everyone knows something that I do not, and and everyone has a perspective that is slightly different from mine. If I can learn a little something from everyone, I will eventually become a better person for it, and by extension, uh, my clients would benefit from that knowledge. I remember in my first or second year of real estate, he actually suggested to me that I go see Murray Taylor, who is then the, the broker owner of Royal City Real Estate, as the biggest real estate company in Guelph at the time, and, and see if Murray would take me on as a realtor. I thought he was joking, and I never really considered it, but perhaps in hindsight I should have. You know, I would have learned something from Murray different from what I was going to learn from my dad anyway, and, and uh, I would have eventually probably been better off for it. Anyway, I didn't, and, and things have worked out fine and, and uh, uh, as they are, but uh, the point remains, uh, we should learn from others. They all know something that we don't. That's pretty funny that he would uh, suggest that you work with someone other than him. Yeah, and like I said, I, I didn't really, I didn't take it seriously at the time. He, you know, I was probably maybe a little offended. I don't know, but uh, but that was just him. He he uh, he realized that, you know, other people saw things differently, and it would be beneficial just to learn from others what they know. It's good philosophy. 
I think so. And you'd say what you learned from him still impacts how the office runs today? Well, really, that would be taking too much credit as the day-to-day operations of the brokerage are now the responsibility of Steve Foti, a co-owner now. But I would say this, that the degree to which we attract like-minded people, how the brokerage operates today is still influenced by both myself and, by extension, my dad. Quick story from my from my formative years in real estate. In, in uh, 1989, only a year into my career, I was very young, very green, gentleman approached my father and asked for his help in purchasing a particular property. There's nothing binding them to, to each other, uh, no agreement in writing, just a handshake, but my dad proceeded to do just that. Two weeks after the completion of the deal, the gentleman walks back into the office and fulfilled his promise. He paid my dad for his help, just as he had promised he would. The only reason he did this is because he had said to my dad he would do it. That story really impacted me at the time, and and to be honest, it still does to this day. You know, business today is in many ways much more formal than it was then, but at its core, this is really still how I prefer to do business. You know, the bond between this gentleman and my dad, it wasn't created with the handshake. It was created when they both fulfilled their commitment to each other that began with the handshake. That is a powerful bond and and a wonderful way to do business if you're fortunate enough to build business relationships with like-minded people. If you can't trust my handshake, you're probably better off without me anyway. And that's probably a good place to end off today with our first podcast. So what do you think? Sounds good, especially if our listeners, both of them, have as short an attention span as I do. Thanks for doing this with me. Yeah, thanks, Dad. It was fun.